Hello and welcome back to another Demis Helen tutorial. We're going to look at EQ, so it's going to be a, probably a little bit of a shorter video today, but just to go through the basics of EQ, I know a lot of people are asking questions about how to EQ things. And there's no quick answer, there's no magical preset, no magical frequency that you need to cut. If you've been following me for a long time, you'll know that you cannot just use numbers to a set time, set place, set frequency for every track. It just doesn't work like that. You can make it mathematically work in harmony and perfectly together, but then you're creating roughly the same template every time. And it's, it's not really doing much for your style. Music's about having that feeling, that emotion and personality that you put into your music whereas electronic music can be easily manipulated to sound like another artist and it's it's their heart and soul that's been poured into that track to get that sound and it's not necessarily going to work under the guise of another person's name it's just going to sound the same as that person develop your own style music isn't about specifics it isn't about numbers that are specific in every track the kick and the bass have to be just right in this place every time. It's different for every sound. So for sake of example, you could have a track that is keyed to D, for example, and your bass and your kick are both in D. You, you blend them together so they're cutting through the mix nicely and everything's working in harmony and it all works beautifully together. You can't apply that same technique then to a track that's in F because you'd have to shift everything up and you might use a slightly different preset bass for example or a different kick drum that might have a different tonal quality or a different amount of extra harmonics in there things change and if you keep to the same preset then you're always going to have the same issue that your tracks are always going to sound the same and there's a difference between your track sounding the same and having a unique sound you can apply your unique sound to different styles of that track rather than just having it sound the same every single time it comes out but with a different melody and before we begin looking at equalization, I just want to point out that this is inspired by In The Mix's video on EQ and how to use the technique of cutting and sweeping through the spectrum rather than boosting. So if you want to see more on that, I've left a link to the video and give credit where credit is due. This technique is a little bit different in terms of this one is going to boost the frequencies and you're going to find those problem areas or what you think is problem areas and you're going to start making cuts. And then you make so many cuts and say you have this many cuts and you've got one here, one here really surgical and you've got another one that's sort of surgical and you've got one that's cutting out to minus three. Let's just open this up and you've got another one that's really cutting out this area because you really hear it and you've got to get rid of it because now you can hear it. You're trying to remove it entirely and this damages your sound. So we're going to use this on a bass. You're going to hear me cut out frequencies using this scooping out technique you're going to hear that this bass is going to change tonal quality you're going to hear it's hollowed out you're going to hear the highs have been removed and it sounds like it's been pushed into the background you're going to hear all different things and these are where these descriptive words really come into effect boxy boomy hollow all these things used to describe the sound and these are the things that sometimes you really need to avoid now we have a clean slate let's have a listen to this sound with the kick and then we'll mute the kick Okay, so you can see here that we've got a few peaks. If we solidify this, you can see that we have some things peeking over. And straight away, a lot of people are going to go, I need to get rid of those. I need to equalize it. Now, an equalizer is to do that exact job, to equalize the sound and control it so it's more uniform to equalize. And we could go, oh, this is too high. It's going up plus 3 dB here at the moment as an average. Let's drop that by 3 dB and equalize the sound out so it's more on level with the rest of the sounds and then the same for all the rest and it doesn't just work like that because sometimes you need those extra things to be more prominent to generate that characteristic of that sound this one is more on the lower end there's a lot of clicking and tapping in the top end because there's a bit of white noise on one of the oscillators but that's something that i'm actually looking for in this mix i can control it at a later date if it's just a little bit too intense so we can go in and we can use the original technique and we can put the frequency up like this let's go really extortionate 
we can go, oh dear, that is a really bad sound. It's really resonant. I'm going to have to remove it. So you think, right, I've removed it now. Has it benefited my track? It sounds a bit tighter in the lower end. That sounds really good. And we've got some broad mid-range stuff in there, so it all sounds good. But you've lost your power. That, that frequency there is a harmonic that is making the character of your bass. You can't just remove it because you heard it and it sounded awful when you boosted it. Most of these frequencies are going to sound awful when you boost it. And this is what In The Mix was showing that. If you do that, you just start making cuts left, right and centre totally randomly and it makes no sense and you think you're doing good and then you come back to your mix and you listen to it and you think well what's wrong with it and then you try and go through and just move and manipulate and nudge things around and it'll never work so these are the things that we need to avoid and the best way for this is to use cuts so if we take this cut and we'll drag it through the frequency spectrum. And if it makes a really big difference, is it benefiting your sound? That is the question. Have a sweep through. We can hear there's starting to have holes carved in this and it's starting to sound quite hollow in the middle. Now that's the rubber band texture. It's now got more of a springy bounce feel to it, but it's removing some core elements of that bass sound. Okay, so we put it here, it starts to sound a little bit boxy. You can hear a few few bits there in the boxy area because it's you're cutting out some of the fundamental parts of this sound and it's emphasizing the other ones by just letting them become more audible. So if we go back in and turn this off. We've changed the character of the sound and that is not what we're looking for. So we'll continue. Okay, so now this is back to this point. It does sound good. It sounds tighter on the lower end. And we've got all that detail still there, but not that extra bit of power in there. But you can hear that it's carved out a hollow area. And that is what we're trying to avoid, especially in this low area. This is a lower bass. This is not a mid-range bass. So we want that power there, but we want to control that power. That is the difference. We want to equalize it. So if we jump in here and dial that back up to zero or near enough there. Do we need to remove it? We can see it's poking up a little bit and we heard that it sounded good when we reduced it a little bit. Well, too much, should we say. So let's just reduce it a little bit and we'll go in here and we'll go to 3dB so we can see. You can see how small that cut was then, but we've actually exceeded probably 4dB there. Let's go back and just 1 dB for now. So it's still sounding a little bit thinner and it's not something that I want to cut and we're, we're already at 1 dB so even if I go here and obviously make this do this right So if you listen to the note that is dum, 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 you can hear that it just controls it a little bit. It's a bit more accentuated when we turn this off. And if you can't hear that, if you don't hear the difference at all, Keep going back to that part of the video and listen to it. Every time it gets turned off and turned back on, just listen to that section and you can hear or do it in your own track and just listen to a certain part of the sound and see if it's changing the sound. Is it doing it for the better or for the worse? Now it's a little bit prominent and a little bit of a cut isn't damaging the sound. The characteristic is retained, but it's just controlling it a little bit. So the same again for this one. Do we need to equalize this one? So let's drop this down a little bit. We'll narrow the cue. And we'll drag it down. And you can see the original signal level is now like this see-through grey. And the new one, where it's lowered, is now the darker grey. 
or should we say the other way around the more transparent gray is what i'm trying to say so the transparent one behind is the old original place and this is the new placement here at the front So to me, it's just removing too much detail, too much power. And it's thinning that sound out. Yes, it could make way for a sub bass that supports in the lower region and we can control that area, but it's, it's removing what I want that sound to sound like. Yes, we could control it a little bit like this. but even that is thinning out that lower end a little bit too much. And I don't want that. I want it to be quite powerful. I can control that because it's not too drastic. It's not like it's really poking through like this, for example. Just boost this up a little bit. Now it sounds quite nice, but I've got a sub bass already in place that's off beat as well, and that takes that role, so I don't need it to be that powerful. Plus, there's a lot of lower detail missing here anyway where I've rolled it off, so I don't want it more powerful, and we would make a little bit of a reduction there if we needed to, but it's already at that stage for me. If we go any lower than that to start removing things, it just starts to get thinner and thinner, and then you'll have a more obvious gap between your sub and this bass that is kind of bridging the gap from the subs to the mids. We don't want to take away that power that it currently possesses. So let's have a look at further up. We can see this is a problem area potentially. So we're gonna make a mark here. We're gonna close that cue down. Now we can hear, oh, that's potentially a problem. We've boosted it and that's the problem with the boosting. Once you've done that, and you take it back down to normal you can kind of hear it because you've technically temporarily trained your ears to hone in on that frequency and you'll always hear it you didn't hear that before until that very moment that i isolated it let's just cut that down a bit and yeah it could be a bit of a potential issue but i haven't noticed it to my ears there's a tiny tiny little bit that comes through but it doesn't damage the audio so if you're a bit fanatical we can go in there and just make a small incision about half a db or something like that and it does just remove that little bit but what we don't want to do is cut that down too much because then we change the dynamic of the sound it starts to have a different tonal quality to it So just a little bit of control like that, and it sounds good, but that's just been really finicky about the sound. And don't take it for gospel that you can't use this boosting and sweeping technique. You can use it initially just to quickly scan through and find a problem area that you can already hear. You can hear a problem, you just swipe through, and it will help you hone in on it straight away. Cut it away, have a listen to it, switch it on and off, bypass it, does it affect the sound tone quality or is it actually benefiting by removing that sound and it's cleaning up the sound a little bit if it is then dial it in and just make it sound just nicely balanced and equalized take the headphones off have a little bit of a breather come back listen to it again is it making a difference or is it hollowing it out is it removing a fundamental area of the frequency that really changes the character of the sound and you can obviously make creative choices from there so don't just jump in and start boosting because then you just start identifying every single frequency on its own. And yes, they sound awful when we start boosting them at 30 decibels in certain frequencies because we're isolating and making them sound horrendous. Okay, that brings this video to an end. If you enjoyed the video, let me know down in the comments and also hit the like button, always does help. And finally, hit the subscribe and bell icon. That will make sure that you see every video that I upload. That's three per week. And it's now currently a Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next video.